XRP up 200% from the local bottom, and it seems like it's still just getting started. Are we able to finally break out of the all-time high at $3.50 in the coming weeks? Let's find out together. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another XRP analysis. Today, we're going to be discussing how XRP can continue its run to the upside, as I personally still believe XRP has plenty of gas in the tank. But before we begin, please make sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really does help. I really appreciate everyone's support thank you very much now doing a little housework here let's uh quickly recap where we were a few weeks ago so if we look here we identified this triangle pattern months in advance and there was a lot of skepticism from both the general market participants from the fundamental side and even technical analysts even le wave analysts especially those who questioned its market cap capability and it's still a big question mark on above everyone's head to support um whether it, to support the price at higher levels or not is even justifiable and fun fact xrp has briefly surpassed BMB's number five spot in the market cap, and XRP arguably has the highest price sensitivity at the moment when it comes to these wild swings in the market cap. You can see XRP was above 90 billion just a few days ago, and is now remaining back into the number six spot. So very, very price sensitive. It goes back and forth, as you can see with these wild swings. But the most important thing is that we're still above Dogecoin, so that is something to keep in mind. And there are also people questioning the rarity of the triangle pattern. If you are looking at it from a technical perspective, like I said. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell everyone here that there is no true statistical evidence or proven way of how many times a certain pattern may play out. There is no real control group with that being said, and markets are infinite in nature and the tides of the environment change constantly. So it's difficult to have a true variable or control factor to find out how often a certain pattern may play out. If anything, the statistical hit rates in certain pieces of literature to me is really anecdotal in nature at the most and a subjective matter as well so uh, the only real thing to keep in mind is that the more complex a pattern does occur such as a wxy complex pattern that in itself does reduce the probability of a pattern playing out by a certain extent but it doesn't mean that it should be completely ruled out i think so many try to focus on the probability and the rarity of the pattern and trying to be sound about it when in reality it's the complexity of the thinking behind it that one must think that we should always choose the simple path when in reality if a lot of the market structure aligns with whatever pattern you're looking at the probability can increase from someone else's point of view this is why bulls and bears exist so with that being said that this triangle pattern if anything else i would say was probably the most probable way of seeing this uh, eight year accumulative range because market participants who are also not versed in the la wave theory was also able to identify the same type of triangle pattern and that is my methodology with the la wave theory it's not by complicating it too much and questioning the ultimate rarity of the pattern although i do agree that certain patterns have higher observable anecdotal rates as i mentioned especially when fibonacci is taken into the equation but we as Elliott with analysts should be applying the wave theory to what the markets see rather than the other way around where how market participants may see how we as Elliott wave analysts see the markets i don't think that's how the market participants are seeing it so going back to this chart as you can see a 200 percent breakout phenomenal now as we have broken two major local resistances as indicated by these two green lines it's now in pro uh, approaching the 2021 critical resistance level here now it's very important and i'm going to get into it just a moment on the smaller time frame but the most important thing on the macro is that we broke out of the bd trend line of this triangle by a massive amount and it's now considered a validated structure especially in my eyes and i think many elliot wave or elioticians are also possibly seeing the same thing at this point if not please correct me now if that's the case right now the only real way we can measure things going forward is that since we're now complete with the wave four here and the triangle being complete is part of the termination point of a larger degree whatever way you're looking at and that is the wave four here on the macro so what that means is now we're working in a five wave impulse to the upside to complete a wave five of a higher degree and in order to do that that wave five is also comprised of five waves in itself and then again if we're working on the shorter time frames to kind of constructively build up how this five wave move is going to be building up there's another set of five waves being built here as well so this may be just the beginning as i've mentioned in the beginning of the video so how are we going to kind of figure out whether this is really truly the five wave impulse to the upside to a larger wave one of the intermediate degree well we're going to have to kind of zoom in so if we go zoom in into the shorter time frames the only real way that we can see this is uh right now 
this move here, as you can see, was part of that last leg of that triangle in a three-wave fashion. But as you can see, we're now kind of figuring out whether this five-wave move to the upside is going to be moving us into a higher degree wave one, because that's the ultimate goal as we're looking for a one of the highest degree, and that's usually the trickiest one to do. But we do have a lot of evidence building up right now, especially with the markets being bullish. The most important thing is that we do have a possible one two being created here with this ultimate range that was being created for weeks on end, and then we had a massive breakout that ultimately also broke the triangles BD trend line, as I've mentioned. And most importantly, this move here does look massively impulsive. It's not something to joke around if you especially if you have a 200% plus move. So that's definitely characteristic of a wave three. Now I did mention there are things that I disagree about the LA wave theory, but one thing I do definitely agree on is the Fibonacci ratios and how well they work in the LA wave theory because the Fibonacci ratios, they work so well because they are rooted in not only the LA wave theory, but in natural patterns and mathematical principles that appear in many aspects of all parts of life, right? So with that being said, in the actual trading regimen of the LA wave theory, the LA wave theory is based on the idea that the markets follow repetitive patterns, right? That's the pure core definition of the LA wave theory. It's driven by investor psychology. Fibonacci ratios reflect the natural proportional relationships that often describe that human behavior, including the optimism and fear in the financial markets, right? And that's why we have support and major resistances. So there's nothing to um, kind of regard, disregard in that sense. And with that being said, that creates that self-fulfilling prophecy that everyone is also seeing the same thing where many traders also use the Fibonacci retracements and extensions as part of their trading strategies. So this widespread usage reinforces all of our validity as key levels of support and resistances in the market. And that's why these wave relationships or ratios in the wave structures become a very important thing to kind of rely on because a lot of people may be seeing the same thing. So in the impulse wave, you know, five wave structure, you know, there's going to be a lot of different wave ratios uh, for corrective waves, wave two corrective waves, for example, you know, if we retrace only 50% or 61.8%, and that's another subject matter in itself. But most importantly, this wave three, how far is going to be extending, right? The most important thing about a wave three and how often has been observed in terms of the actual extension target, we see that wave three often usually extends to the 161.8% or even the 261.8% of the length of wave one. So if we take the pivotal points of the wave one and two, and we kind of measure it, we can already see that we've already had some kind of local resistance hitting that's at 161.8%. So as you can see, is that a self-fulfilling prophecy? I don't think so. If everyone's seeing the same thing, it's basically a self-fulfilled prophecy in itself, right? But markets were strong enough to break out of that. And now we're kind of trading or sandwiched in between the 261.8 and the 161.8%. So without a doubt, as we're also possibly seeing now at the current time of recording, a possible pullback being coming into play. We just don't know where it's going to happen, but most likely at these major pivotal levels of these uh, major levels of Fibonacci retracements, for this wave three, which is the 161.8 and the 261.8 percent, it just doesn't really matter at this point. We're just going to have to expect some kind of retracement happening, no matter what. I mean, eventually we can see it still going up. Wave four could be technically complete right now if you wanted it to. But most importantly, we want to see how the reaction and what kind of corrective wave pattern can be built up here, especially that wave one two was a long in time. We also want to see how this wave four plays out. But most likely, we're probably going to see this as some kind of sharp nature as this move here of a wave two based on alternation. If wave two is sideways, we're also going to expect that wave four is going to be sharp. And it looks like we're already getting that characteristic where a lot of people are taking profits, especially after a 200% run. So if this turns into a sharp ABC, you can turn into a complex corrective pattern, can turn into flat. It doesn't really matter. But on the smaller time frame scales, the idea and guidelines start to get diminished in terms of that. Uh, you start to really, fo if you focus on too much of that and you try to kind of build upon the theory too much, then you're going to get wrapped up, either get caught up and not get into a position or you're going to get locked in a position and you're going to lose a lot of money. Um, so right now, 
what we should be doing is we should have been playing the breakout pattern of that triangle pattern over here where we're looking for identifying a larger breakout pattern. And right now, for those that did play that pattern, we are in a very, very good spot. So we do have a lot of ways to create this wave four. And once we create that wave five, I would expect that's gonna be the larger one, two, three, four, five to be completing for a larger wave one, and then to do another wave one, two. So this may be technically turning into a larger accumulative phase all the way up into the quarter one of 2025. We don't wanna be, you know, be too ambitious and say that it's just going to continue up, although it can, because if we go back in 2018, that's exactly what happened. We saw, you know, XRP just go massively up to the upside, right? On the log scale, um, on the linear scale, it, just, it looks even crazier, right? It looks like just a massive Himalayan mountain kind of moved to the upside. And same here, it's just kind of creating another peak here. And three peaks, usually very bullish, by the way, is what's happening right now. And I think right now, especially with the markets starting to come back into this bullish sentiment, a lot of people are expecting BTC to break 100K. Although that's not really too much of an importance to me, um, especially with BTC. I think that the you know the whole transitional phase in the altcoin markets, the alt season rather, is that we're also seeing a massive shift into the altcoins right now as BTC is already at a huge uh, or high, very high level at uh, in terms of the price. So right now, I think that XRP is still within uh, a larger looks like it's a completed five-way move up of this internal degree here of this wave three. I'm expecting some kind of wave four to play out. How it's going to play out, we'll have to see. We don't know exactly, but maybe if we do retest that $1 level, still not really too bad, right? If we're saying that this is the actual top and we take the pivot of this wave two to this wave three, we have a long way to go, ladies and gentlemen, to retest this. We haven't even retested the 382%. So in that case, if we do also take into the consideration that this higher degree wave four is going to come back into the previous territory of wave four of the previous degree, then there's a possibility that we can even retest the dollar level. It just really doesn't matter. At this point, we have really nicely positioned because of our previous analysis. So right now, I'm still expecting that this wave one, two, three, four, five is in play of the minor degree on the macro. If we go back into the macro scale, as you can see, the minor degree is still in play. In order to retain symmetry and overall good look, this is just our expectation. Again, we we can just continue up right now and we don't even know what degree we may be in so uh that's how it is ladies and gentlemen um i think that we still based on the theory alone that we are still looking for five waves up and that should be happening going up into possibly all the way up into you know a few years later we don't know but my overall expectation is still breaking the all-time high hopefully that was a great educational lesson for everyone and also uh the also um major expectations of how i see it on the shorter and larger time frames thank you very much i have so much on my schedule right now for uh, this week i am going to be uploading a lot of videos uh, the next video is probably most likely going to be a bitcoin video so please do make sure to subscribe and, and hit that like button ladies and gentlemen you guys are killing it these days and we are getting the, a lot of subscribe we surpassed the 7,000 subscriber level i want to see 10,000 by the new year i don't know <laughs> so we'll see thank you very much ladies and gentlemen. i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye